And that would be your... Additionally, you also have a letter addressed to the postmaster in <clears throat> Paris, France. And if you take it to him, that'll be from... Thank you very much. Now, as I told you, we're going to have a brief. Ladies. I want to turn it over to Oliver Hurd. He's going to, in, a, in as much as possible, recreate re the uh, flight of Charles Lindbergh 50 years ago. In many ways, of course, it's uh, it's quite a, a different undertaking. Uh, certainly, his was much the greater task, but it is not uh, a simple thing even today. There was a great deal of preparation has gone. A uh, great deal of preparation has gone into the flight. Uh, the airplane has sub been substantially changed as far as the radios. And Amy's school with the Montessori workshop thought about the most important thing. They brought him five sandwiches. I don't know if you all know, but Colonel Lindbergh took five sandwiches with him on his trip. He only ate one and a half. We're hoping that Philip will eat them all. And here to make the presentation of the sandwiches are Peter Shear, who's going to read you a letter that he wrote, and Troy Wolverton, who also wrote a letter, and his daughter, Amy Hardberger, is going to give him the sandwiches. <laughs> I thank you for the five sandwiches. And looking at Colonel Lindbergh's waist and looking at my own, I think I'll probably eat all five of mine. <laughs> well, the uh, advantages I will have is really uh, quite superior equipment. Of course, he has functioned very well, but by and large, the reliability of his equipment wasn't nearly as good uh, as mine is. I also will have communications, or should have communications the entire route which he had no communication, so he was impossible for him to talk to anybody. Uh, There's something ironic about the... Uh, but I would be landing very close by. Yes, Would you put it there if you could get in?